Well, hey there, today we're talking about intermittent fasting to help reduce your risk of respiratory infections. And so we know about SARS-CoV-2, obviously it's taken the world by storm. And there are certain characteristics that we know and understand about the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And so when we look at that, one of the big things is that the spike protein, it binds to the ACE2 receptor, which is a receptor site that we find in our lungs. We also find it in you know, various tissues throughout the body. One big thing we found is that actually adipose tissue or fat tissue actually has a lot of ACE2 receptors. And this is one reason why uh, obese individuals, people have higher amounts of body fat. Research has actually shown that their body fat is acting as a reservoir. So they actually can hold on to higher amounts of viral loads, causing a longer, more exasperated um, viral response to their body. The other big thing we found is that the ACE2 receptor, so if your body is healthy and you have healthy blood sugar levels, it's actually harder for SARS-CoV-2 to bind to the ACE2 receptor. So there are, when you have hyper, hyperglycemia or high blood sugar, the sugar molecules will actually bind to proteins in your bloodstream and they'll create something called an advanced glycation end product, an AGE. And these advanced glycation end products go around and they damage different tissues of the body. And one of the tissues they damage or one of the areas they damage are these ACE2 receptors. They actually call, call it a glycosylated ACE2 receptor. And what's been shown is that the more of these glycosylated or damaged, functionally damaged ACE2 receptors you have, the greater the binding capacity for the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus, meaning that the more blood sugar related damage your body has, the greater the uh, risk of infection, okay? The higher the viral load and the worse outcome you're gonna have with COVID-19. And so um, research has shown that intermittent fasting, right? And something I talk about all the time, intermittent fasting, not only does it help bring down blood sugar, but it also brings down inflammation and SARS-CoV-2 drives up inflammation in the body, right? So it drives up this, this process called cytokine storm where the immune system just starts going haywire. And there is a, um, a, a genetic uh, inflammatory switch called the NLRP3 neuroinflammasome that, that gets elevated. And this is why you feel br you have brain fog, you have joint pain because there's inflammation throughout your whole body when you're dealing with SARS-CoV-2 uh, or COVID infection. And we know that intermittent fasting helps blunt that. And so I'm gonna go through a few, a few recent studies that really talk about how intermittent fasting is one of the best strategies that you can be using, intermittent or like an intensive short-term fast, one of the best strategies to help prevent against getting any sort of uh, you know, high viral load from SARS-CoV-2 and getting an infection, but also one of the best things you can do to help prevent any sort of problems that you may have with it. Or at the, it, you can even start, at the moment you start experiencing symptoms, right? Just start fasting and your body will attenuate and um, it will help to adapt, bring down inflammation. It's going, to tur it's going to ramp up autophagy. And we know from these studies that cells that are undergoing autophagy, where they're actually breaking down old damaged debris and rebuilding themselves, viruses can't infect and cause problems in those kinds of cells. In fact, this is really our body's innate mechanism. Fasting is our body's innate mechanism for getting rid of viral infected cells. I mean, you think about it, when you have a flu, how do you feel? Like, do you feel hungry? Do you feel like you wanna eat a lot of food? No, you typically don't have much of a appetite at all and you may even be vomiting. I remember several years ago having a stomach flu and I couldn't even drink water I was throwing up. Uh, and so it was like three or four days before I could even drink water. So I did a dry fast and my body during that period of time did really deep intensive healing and healed my body at the cellular level, got rid of so many different viruses that may have infected different cells. All of us are walking around with viral infected cells, whether it's SARS-CoV-2 or it's Epstein-Barr or cyto cytomegalovirus, herpes simplex, um, herpes zoster. I mean, there's so many different viruses that could be infecting cells, okay? This is why people get shingles. They are harboring a virus that's just not replicating quickly, but it's still in the, in the cells and it hasn't, well, we haven't gotten rid of it. And then they're under a lot of stress. So they have major stress, something happens. 
and uh, it reactivates. Their immune system goes down and the virus reactivates. And so this happens for a lot of different people. A lot of autoimmune conditions are related to um, viral infected cells. There's a strong relationship between Hashimoto's thyroiditis, meaning autoimmunity, uh, to the thyroid tissue, Graves' disease as well, where you have hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism and an Epstein-Barr virus, right? A type of virus that can infect those cells and then the body starts trying to kill that virus. And so getting your viral load down through intermittent fasting, one of the best things you can do. So let's take a look at a couple of these, st these uh, studies. The first one I want to talk about is uh, it's from Immunological Letters in uh, 2020, October 2020. It says, intermittent fasting, a possible priming tool for host defense against SARS-CoV-2 infection, crosstalk among calorie restriction, autophagy, and the immune response. And a big highlight I have out of this study is that SARS-CoV-2 evolves mechanisms that help evade the host immune system. So our body's always trying to hunt out and regulate different uh, viruses and different pathogens in our system the most potent and you know, potentially lethal viruses or, or pathogens are the ones that have actually are do a great job of tricking the immune system. And so one of the ways that SARS-CoV-2 SARS-CoV-2 does that is through the persistent activation of the NLRP3 inflammasome. It's a component of the innate immune system and it activates pro-inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin. 1 beta and interleukin 18 in the macrophages. And we know that in this study, it talks about how intermittent fasting acts to modulate or balance, tame the immune system, turn down that NLRP3 inflammasome. So it turns it down, it helps modulate, balance the immune system. So the immune system is more effective at hunting out and regulating things. See, when the immune system has kind of this widespread systemic type of, uh, uh, type of an inflammation process, it becomes non-specific, so really it's just damaging tissue, but it's not very specific and good and accurate in its mode of action, and therefore a lot of these pathogens are able to easily escape and easily hide. Whereas when the immune system is functioning really good, it's well balanced, modulated, and it's able to hunt out and be very specific in its attack, and that's how we're able to get rid of these pathogens. And, and fasting is one of the best ways. Again to help modulate that, doing some sort of intermittent fasting. Now, the second study I want to talk about is from Trends of Endocrinology Metabolism. It's COVID-19 and obesity fighting two pandemics with intermittent fasting. Again, as I talked about, hyperglycemia or high blood sugar increases cytokine storms and increases inflammation. High interferon-5 or IRF-5, TNF-alpha and IL-6, these are all cytokines that are associated with inflammation. They're metabolic markers of inflammation, and they are found to be higher in the fat tissue of obese patients as opposed to leaner individuals. Hyperglycemia could lead to the increased glyco glycosylation of these ACE2 receptors. Again, the damage, the functional damaging of these receptors, which is thought to be important for, um, again, allowing the virus to enter into the, to the ACE2 receptor. So if you have good, stable blood sugar, right? And one way to look at this would be if you ever got your hemoglobin A1C measured. Hemoglobin A1C is a very simple measurement that most doctors are running. And your normal levels, really ideal levels, should be under 5%, meaning that 5% of your red blood cells are, are glycosylated, right? Are damaged from blood sugar, okay? And so to be, you know, di diabetics, for example, at, are at 6.5 or higher percentage. Okay, but if you're at 5.7, that is really unhealthy. Okay, that's actually a very unhealthy percentage. And that's a sign that your ACE2 receptors are going to be glycosylated. And therefore, they're going to be much more, they're going to be at higher risk for um, SARS-CoV-2 viral entry. So we've got to get that blood sugar under control. And so we know that, in, again, intermittent fasting, one of the best things we can do in order to do that. So the <clears throat> third study I want to talk about was aging cell. Okay, and this is innate immune remodeling by short-term intensive fasting. And it talks about how actually fasting increases the amount of neutrophils, which are a type of white blood cell that is really good at hunting out regulating pathogens, goes out and gets those pathogens and so you'll get a short-term rise in these neutrophils. And this is why, again, 
why your body has these natural innate mechanisms where if you get the flu, you, you, you lose your appetite. That appetite suppression is a healthy thing because now your body can go into almost like a hibernation mode and it can really ramp up neutrophils. It can go out, hunt out these pathogens and get rid of them. So you're going to notice that. So when you feel ill, it's a really good idea to do some sort of fasting. I recommend getting water, getting some electrolytes. You may do a partial fast, maybe like a bone broth fast or something like that, where you're still getting water and electrolytes. If you have a fever and you're sweating, you certainly need the water, the hydration and the electrolytes. But starting to fast, listening to your body, being intuitive. You might do a three or four or five day fast during that period of time. And that will, again, modulate the immune system. It will help reduce the amount of um, dysfunctional ACE2 receptors. It will reduce the binding spots that are available for the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus. And it will reduce your overall viral load and reduce inflammation in your body. And you'll feel significantly better. Now, for prevention, I would recommend doing a 16 to 18 hour fast on a regular basis. So depending on your body size, your gender, for a lot of very lean, very active women who are you know, having their menstrual cycle, I don't recommend daily intermittent fasting. I would recommend doing something like a 12 to 14 hour fast on a daily basis, but then bumping it up to about 16 or 18 hours, two, maybe three days a week for, for a woman in that category. For most men, it's pretty easy to do a 16 or 18 hour fast um, and eat two or three meals in that you know, eight hour eating window so you're still getting the, the, the quality calories that you need so you're not in starvation mode. You're just restricting your window. And by doing that, you're gonna bring down your blood sugar, you're gonna bring down your insulin, you're gonna reduce the amount of, um, of AGE production, glycosylation that's taking place in your body. You're going to reduce inflammation in your system and you're going to function so much better. So intermittent fasting, the research has shown, can be one of the best preventative strategies for reducing your viral load and improving your outcome if you do end up getting a SARS-CoV-2 infection. If you want more information about fasting, of course, drjockers.com. You have tons of content there. I have tons of videos. I also wrote a best-selling book called The Fasting Transformation which is really a, a functional guide to how to use fasting to help you burn fat, heal your body, and transform your life. So check that out as well. And guys, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, now's the time to do that and hit the bell button. That way you get notified whenever I put up a new video. Guys, we'll see you in a future online training. Everybody be blessed.